Hey all, it's Vintage Vinny and welcome to another antique store haul. Before we jump into that, I do want to share with you all the two items that I picked up at one of the Goodwills that's on my way home from this antique store. This franchise tends to be a little bit more on the pricier side. There are still things to be found. You just gotta really be careful with what you're picking up because they do seem to think that they are a little bit hoity-toity. They have... I think six or seven locations, or eight locations from what I understand, in this particular part of Maryland. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So, this was a really fun find. It was $7.49, and it's, I think it's Italian, just by the look of it. I just really liked the colors, I liked the texture. It comes with the original metal handle. No cracks, no chips, no repairs. And sometimes when I'm at the thrifts and I say, if I saw that at an antique store for $7.49, more than likely I would pick it up. And vice versa, if I'm at the antique store and I see something that I really like and I see it priced for, I don't know, like a amount like this, and I say, oh, if I saw that at the thrift store, would I pick it up because it's different? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. That's just how that is. But this was unique, and I said, ooh, I really like that, and then I just felt that $7.50 was a fair price for it. Now, this is really cool. Not exactly sure how old it is. It's a faux fireplace, or I don't even know what toy it goes to because there's no markings to say. Actually, I'm wrong. There is a marking right here, and I'm just now seeing this for the first time. It's got an... Oh, it's Arco, and it's made in oh, Hong Kong. I knew that this wasn't a more modern piece, and I paid $249 for it. Is that out of focus? I'm so sorry. Yes, that was $249, made in Hong Kong by Arco, and I knew it was older because the back has kind of like a cardstock, cardboard kind of feeling or vibe to it, and I would think that this would look great in Christmas displays and vignettes because of... I know, because we all think of a fireplace and Santa Claus coming down the chimney for your with your presents and things. So I just grabbed that for $250, and I will look this up just to see if it's got any value to it. But I just thought it was fun and would look really great with vintage Christmas stuff. So now we're going to be checking out everything I picked up at the Antique Mall. I did meet up with Chad at In a Retro Days. You can follow him on Instagram. And we just did a little shopping. I gave him a couple of the items that he purchased for my live sales. And basically, we were both bad influences on each other. If I saw something I really liked, he talked me into it. If he saw something he really liked, I talked him into it. That's just what happens when two resellers go pick in together. So this was one item that I found in one of the booths. It was $12. It's a Rockin' Spuds McKenzie Bud Light Beer Jigsaw Puzzle. I did pay $12 for it. And it's brand new and sealed. I believe I looked it up on Amazon. And I can't for the life of me remember how much it would go for if I sent it into the warehouses. If I find that out, I will go ahead and link it in the video. But I wouldn't have bought it for the 12 bucks if I didn't think it was worth it. For only $8, I picked up this Santa tray. Now, I'm not going to lie, Santa's face is a tad bit creepy, but I really enjoy the starbursts that kind of go around the border and are placed all over the tray itself. It does have some cosmetic damage, but that's just normal with age. If I had to guess, I would say this is probably from the 50s or the 60s. And at first I wasn't sure if it was something that was made at Target or if it was an older piece. I suspect that it is an older piece because if you look at the hat that Santa's wearing, he's got, I guess, like sparkles or something in it. And you don't really see that in Santa hats anymore, not even nowadays. I mean, you see the ones that are made of sequins and things like that, but not that kind of style. And yeah, Santa's face is a tad bit on the creepy side, but... 
I mean, some vintage Santa Clauses, let's be real, are kind of creepy. So this was actually the first item that I found at this mall. I paid $4 for it. It's a 1985 Easter Bunny. He still has the plastic hook on him, so I assume he was probably never played with. And I just felt that he was very fun and colorful, and of course he's being shy because his ears are covering his face. But I just really liked the bright neon colors. It definitely screams 1980s. More than likely, I will be saving this for next spring because people are starting to roll into summer now. We've got Memorial Day on our minds and we're looking forward to the pools being open again. And hopefully a lot more people are able to go because a lot of people are getting vaccinated for COVID. So yeah, that's going to be a fun item to offer next spring. This next item is really, really cool. It's a World's Fair Century of Progress bottle. I really, really like the Art Deco lines on it, with like the skyscraper look and just the skyscraper embossed into the glass. It's from 1933, if I didn't say that already. And it was $4.80. And if you ever watch Jocelyn's Shop With Me videos, this is from the booth that has a lot of the cow creamers. And it seems like every time both she and I go there, they always restock on those darn cows. But I will tell you, they sell because you don't see the same ones there every time we shop. For $6.75, I picked up this really awesome Dancing Santa figure. He's in really good condition. I think there might just be some slight paint cracking on the back right here, which is, you know, normal for pieces like this. But other than that, it'd make a great piece to display at Christmas time. So he will probably go in a vintage Christmas-themed sale, which I will probably have... Maybe late October, early November. I really want to make sure that I do sales like that and get have them ahead of time so that way you guys can have these for the holidays. Cover your eyes, Misty and Katie. I did find this really awesome vintage clown bank. I don't really know what drew me to him, but I liked him. I think maybe it was just his bright colors. He does have some issues, as you can see, there's some paint loss there. No markings to say who made him, but I know he's definitely older. And he was only $5. So this is a really interesting piece. It's a Lefton pitcher with the grapevines and gold and blue leaves. And it would look really nice with shabby chic farmhouse style. It is marked on the bottom left in China, 2186. And I paid $3.20 for it on sale from four. And I did not even see that chip until I unwrapped this. I don't know what was going through my head at the time, but had I seen that, I more than likely would not have bought it. So I will probably be offering that for maybe just like five or six bucks at a sale and see if anybody wants it. I mean, you can't even really see it if you have it sitting like this. And that's probably why I didn't see it. That's completely out of focus. But, I mean, it's still really nice, despite the flaws. This I did pay up for. This was $6.99. It is a nest egg, and it obviously says that on the front. And there are pennies on here, and they are from the year 1955. So that's when I assume that this is from. So there's no stopper, but still a really nice piece. I will more than likely be saving this for next spring. Or since we are still in spring, you'll, you may see it at the next sale. We'll do one more spring-themed sale, and then we will move on to... If I can find some summer things, and maybe we'll move into some fall things as well. Just depends on what I can find out there. Now this, I'm not really sure what it is, but I really do like it. 
It's cold painted, and as you can see, some of the cold paint did chip off. And it looks like Santa's smoking a pipe. This was, I believe, $7.50. It's made by Shafford, Japan. It's got 8605 on the bottom of it. I almost want to say maybe it's for matches and a lighter because there is a metal insert here. And I have a Holt Howard Santa Claus ashtray that has a top to hold a lighter. So that's what I'm assuming that this is, but I could be wrong. Either way, I think it's a really cool piece. This, yet again, is something that I wish I would have thoroughly looked over. And what's funny is I picked it up, and this comes from a booth where the prices are usually not that great. But I saw $5 as is, and I even turned it around and was like, what's wrong with it? And it wasn't until I unwrapped it a couple days ago that I realized the wings were broken off. It's a GOZ Lefton um, November wall hanging. I've never seen these before. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'll offer that at a sale or what I'm going to do with it. I did pay $4, so this was probably one of the cheaper items that was found in that booth. Because everything else was just... A little outrageous, but she did have a sale, so I can't knock her for that. I believe this set was only $3. It's a floral luster salt and pepper shaker set. Tulips, and they've got bees on them. It does say Japan on the bottom right here, hand-painted. So I'll more than likely ask double, or maybe just a little over double what I spent at a sale, so be on the lookout for that. This has been there for a while, it's just a souvenir piece. I probably will sell that also. It says, tongue depressor for folks with a big mouth from Skyline Drive, Virginia. Just wooden, I'll probably try to take that sticky residue off without ruining it. But I thought that that was just fun. Or maybe I'll save it and put it in my future bathroom with a bunch of vintage stuff. We'll see what happens. I got this guy for $2. I don't know really what possessed me to do so, but it's like, I think it's chalk or something like that. And the paint's kind of worn on him. I may wait till Christmas time to sell him. Because he's got Christmas colors. But we shall see. Again, these are another item that I did pay up for. It's some pink cow salt and pepper shakers. And I believe those were $6. So I'll probably have to ask upwards of maybe 12 for those because I need to at least double what I spent. But they're interesting. They're marked Japan. I would think I would think they would look like left in pieces, but you know, I never know. Oops, I was getting caught here. So I did find two poodle pieces. The pin was a dollar ninety nine, and this keychain here was two fifty. I'll more than likely be putting the keychain in my junk jar, and I'll probably sell the poodle pin at a sale. But I just couldn't say no to that because I like stuff like this and I don't haven't bought anything for my jar in a long time. For $3, I did pick up this 1960s mouse candlestick figurine. So be on the lookout for that at a live sale. I'm sure someone out there is going to really, really like that. Paid... $4 for this vintage NFL cologne spray. To my surprise, it actually does smell pretty good. And it's about 98% full. I did look this up, and it looks like one just sold for about 35 bucks. So we will see what happens there. For only 5 bucks, I did pick up this bag of figures. Let's go ahead and open them up and see what's in there, shall we? So this is what was in the bag. We've got a cowboy, and that kind of looks inappropriate with where that's placed. But I think he was supposed to be sitting on something, and unfortunately that animal is missing. 
I'll have to do a little bit more research to see who it is and what its value may be. And then we've got a yellow Native American that just fell over. We've got a red lion, and we've got another Native American. I did try to see if there were any marks on them for Mark's toys, but I did not see that. They might just be something fun to craft with. I'm not exactly sure. But I thought it was worth taking a shot for five bucks. I could not open the bag to see what was in there. But that's just how it is sometimes. So I thought that was a pretty good find, and you never know something might be valuable in that bag. I am a sucker for old pictures, so I saw these two. There's one behind it, I'll show you the other one. Of some nurses, and it looks like they just graduated nursing school. And I just was really intrigued by them, because you don't... I've never seen photos of old healthcare workers, at least not very much in my world, I don't see them. So it was five bucks for both of them, which I felt was a good price. Um, there is some damage, as you can see, some creasing on this side, and that's on both of them. But again, I just really liked that. I just think that that is just super, super cool. So here is the one, I guess they're wearing their capes, which I guess was very common back in the, what, 50s and 60s. It's really just fun to see how professionals dressed back then especially in this field, because nurses do not dress like this anymore. So I thought paying $5 was good for my ephemera book. And the last item, my favorite item, and the one that Chad talked me into buying was this really awesome glass lighter. It's a hand-blown piece, because there's the ponto that's been smoothed over. And it looks like somebody filled it with different colored sea glass, which is very, very unique. I've never seen anything like that before. And I did pay $20 for it. Now, I do want to let you all know that the $139 that I spent there does include three items that I bought for friend mail. So, of course, I'm not going to share that with you all because I want that person to be surprised. So that does include add on an extra, what was it, like, eight, where's the other, so that adds an extra $11.15 to my bill, so, everything you're seeing, basically, was about $131. But yeah, I really, really liked this. I just couldn't take my eyes off of it because I've never, ever seen a lighter with all this different sea glass in it. And I, like I said, I just love the different colors. I'm wondering if that little piece right there glows. Should we check and see? Well, I do see some pieces fluorescing in here, so that means there's some uranium. How cool is that? I mean, I definitely think that this was worth $20. Not just because I haven't seen one before, but because there's some uranium in here. So that is everything that I would like to share with you all today. Let me know in the comments section below what was your favorite item or favorite items I picked up in this haul. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!